Um, IP camera integration, and I stress the IP camera integration. What Atrium will do is at a very basic level at this time, it allows us, as we see in this little capture here, uh, to view the person that is at the door through the uh, Atrium web browser. So someone is at my building, uh, the pizza delivery man, and I, he just rang the doorbell, and um, I will connect to the system and be able to see who is at the door. Uh, we will be able to view live streaming video. The stream that we use is an M, uh, a motion JPEG stream um, that you will be able to uh, put up in the system. And depending on the resolution and how many frames per second, uh, you will be able to see a live streaming video of the uh, person at that particular door. Since the Atrium system supports 10 doors, we can have 10 cameras per controller, so one for each door. If you want, you can associate two cameras to the same door. In other words, I have a camera inside and I have a camera outside of that same door in the system. We can do that. However, I am still limited to a maximum of 10 doors or 10 cameras per controller. So in other words, if I have two cameras per door, I'll be able to do five doors, camera in, camera out or one camera per door for a total of 10, 10 cameras for 10 doors. Now, of course, if I have 20 doors, I can do 10 uh, camera in, camera out, or 20 cameras individually per door. It's per controller, as we saw in the diagram a bit earlier, as we see here. So it's one per reader, or I could have two cameras on one reader, then I would have two, um, five doors with two cameras apiece. Uh, in the web browser, in our in the doors menu, um, you can go to the door. You can associate the camera to the door, and any camera, any door that has a camera associated, you just click on the camera icon, and you will be able to view the camera. And you can also, once you click on that icon, be able to grant access to that door from that pop-up window with the streaming live view. We also uh, are able to do alarm integration, uh, intrusion detection, so an alarm system. The key concept here is to be able to arm and disarm the alarm system using a card or a badge, if you will, or a, key, a pin number on the uh, reader at the door instead of going to the keypad for the alarm system and entering your code to arm and disarm. Um, in the system, you will be able to see, you know, because the uh, web-enabled uh, option of Atrium, you know, the web uh, capacity, you'll be able to use a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer, of course, and also in your software if you're using a computer um, to see um, if the system is armed. If it is an alarm, you will be able to configure who can arm or disarm the system. So this is an option you enable in the uh, user's menu, so when you're issuing are uh, creating users in the database, you can activate the option to arm and or disarm. Uh, when you're set up and you connect to the system and you have the integration completed, you will be able to see if the system is armed or disarmed, and if it is armed, if the, uh, the building is an alarm or not. You will also be able to, whether it's the web interface or the PC software, the Atrium software, be able to manually arm and disarm through a button on the uh, interface. So um, it's to simplify things, uh, and the three uh, options at the bottom here, you will double swipe your card or doable swipe card. So you swipe the same card twice at the reader within five seconds, and this will arm the alarm system. Um, if you have disarming rights, a single card swipe will disarm the alarm system. And as I mentioned a moment ago, you can also, through the web interface or the software, uh, click on a button to arm and disarm your alarm system. One point that I'd like to maybe uh, expand upon with the alarm system, if the system is armed, for example, uh, here's a scenario. 
when the uh, I've left the building last night, I'm the uh, superintendent of the building. Uh, I left the building and when I left, I double swiped my card uh, as I was leaving to be able to arm the alarm system. The following morning, the system is still armed. The alarm system is still armed and my employees arrive. I happen to have uh, been um, delayed this morning because of traffic issues or whatever the case may be. I have not at the building yet. My employees do not have disarming rights, but they do have a uh, access level permitting them, uh, for example, access to the building from 7.30 in the morning. Uh, usually I'm at work by seven o'clock, so when they show up, I've disarmed the system and everybody can come in according to their access rights. However, today I am not, uh, have not arrived. The, it is now 7.45. The employees are trying to gain access to the building. I do not want them to um, trigger a false alarm. So the system will prevent anybody that has, uh, that does not have disarming rights from accessing the building if they, uh, even if their access level is valid at the time. So uh, we will override the access rights of the users that do not have disarming access if the alarm system is still armed. So you must have disarming rights to be able to gain access to that door. Once the system is disarmed, then the uh, employees access levels and all the access levels will begin functioning normally. Um, here, one word to monitor the status. Uh, this is the web interface, the Atrium web interface. Um, we can see if the alarm is armed, uh, if it's active, uh, padlock being armed if the padlock is closed, if the system is an alarm, and if the system is disarmed or not. The uh, connection between the um, Atrium system over on the right, the, the Atrium controller, and an alarm system. Uh, what you need to uh, obtain uh, confirmation from is the, the alarm panel itself. The intrusion detection system must support key switch arming. So when we double swipe a card at a reader, what will Atrium, the control panel, will do is trigger one of the two dry contact relays on the control panel. This relay output will be connected to a zone, a key switch arming zone on the alarm system. So when the alarm system senses that the status of the arming zone has changed, it will go into arming uh, mode. To know if the system is armed and disarmed in the atrium interface, we will need two PGM outputs, two programmable outputs from the alarm panel. One of them to, is to indicate if the system is armed or not. And the second output from the alarm panel is if the system is an alarm or not. These two programmable outputs will have external dry contact relays and we will monitor those relays with two inputs on the atrium panel. So that's how we know if the system is armed or disarmed and if it is an alarm or not. Uh, moving forward, um, Slage integration. Uh, Slage is a... Uh, wireless door um, lock set um, that we are able to communicate with through the uh, atrium interface, uh, what we call the ADH-10. Um, and it allows us to manage remotely or in from a central location all the handles on the system. So think of a, an NDE is uh, these handles and also the LE. So these are Schlage products that are standalone solutions. Now, they also have a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, Blue, um, Bluetooth low energy connection connectivity that we can connect to this through a gateway device that's connected on the expander bus of the A22 to allow us to control these handles remotely and add and delete cards and so on and so forth. We can have, we can mix and match door readers and these door handles on the same system if you need to. Um, elevator integration, um, any A22 controller uh, can be converted into an elevator controller. Um, when the software is uh, received in the kit on your DVD, um, you have 
available firmware, the latest firmware available, and one of the firmwares that is included on the uh, the DVD itself is the elevator controller, the EC, elevator controller firmware. Uh, so you can take that firmware and upload it into an A22 to convert that controller, that A22, into an elevator controller. Uh, of course, you can also go onto our website, log in, and download the firmware, the latest firmware from our website directly. So it's a free firmware. There's no charge to convert a controller, uh, an A22, into an elevator controller. And what we'll do is when you inside the elevator cab itself, uh, you will install a reader. That reader will be connected to the A22 that's been uh, upgraded with for the elevator firmware. And uh, you will be able to control which floors uh, the uh, card has access to. Um, we can control in one elevator cab up to 64 floors. Now, there is an elevator controller that comes with that. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a uh, relay board with, uh, with 16 relays. And it's an elevator controller with 16 relays. So the A22, I upgrade the firmware to make it an elevator controller. And that allows that A22 elevator controller to communicate with the elevator controller itself with the relays. The Elevator controller part number is the uh, Centaur elevator controller, which is the CA480A. So that elevator controller controls 16 floors a piece. There are 16 relays. If I want to do 64 floors, I will need four of these elevator controllers communicating with one A22 EC to be able to control 64 floors. We can do a total combined amount of 256 floors so if i say i can do i have an elevator a building with 64 floors i could do eight elevators with 64 floors a piece now there aren't many buildings out there that are 64 floor buildings there are many that are 10 floors 12 floors six floors and so on and so forth so the overall capacity is 256 floors that i can manage that i can control if i have um, eight floors, well, I can multiply the number of cabs times eight to see how many cabs I can do when I reach 256 floors total. 